The platypus is a monotreme only found in Australia, a mammal that lays eggs. Their ancestors share the world with dinosaurs. He did not need to evolve any further because he had no predators in his watery world. He has all the tools to be successful. The platypus can be found on the east side of the continent from far north down to Tasmania. Freshwater lakes and streams are his habitat, where he catches small invertebrates with the electroreceptors in its bill. When he dives, he closes his eyes, ears and nostrils. None of them are needed to catch prey, he has very poor eyesight. Its length is a bit over 50 centimeters, weighs between 1 and 3 kilos, and might live up to 20 years. The Tasmania species is larger than the one in the continent. The platypus is nocturnal, can be seen hunting and diving in many places at dawn and dusk. In Tasmania we've seen them at any time of the day in most places. Tourists, internal and from overseas, believe that they arrive in a spot, and the loved animal starts to perform for them. A wrong message created by media and zoos. Patience and time are needed to appreciate this little marvel in his natural habitat. Echidnas are Australia's most widespread native mammals. Echidnas are monotremes, like the platypuses, the only mammals in the world that lay eggs. They are about 40 centimeters long, and weigh between 2 and 5 kilos. Their snouts are rigid and strong enough for digging out food and burrowing in the soil. You can find echidnas slowly wandering around most habitats, from deserts to rainforests. Dingoes and large goannas may eat young or young adults, but generally echidnas don't have many natural predators. They sense the vibrations of the footsteps of predators and uncurl into a ball, a very effective protection strategy. We spotted this individual in South Bruni Island, Tasmania, and filmed him for 30 minutes. He was about his business, undisturbed by the human presence, a complete different behavior than those on the continent, very common with all Tasmanian fauna. Yes, this is how he's got his bad reputation, this otherworldly howl was the welcome to European settlers in the Tasmanian Nights. Upset a Tasmanian devil and you'll quickly learn how it got its name. When threatened, this stocky marsupial is prone to bear its sharp teeth, lunge and growl. This is also part of a typical feeding time display. Tasmanian devils are the largest carnivorous marsupials in the world today. They are the size of a small dog. They were extinct on the continent, probably because of the introduction of the dingo some three millennia ago. Typically solitary, a carcass is one of the few things that will bring them together communally, where they display this aggressive behavior very much exploited by media for show business matters. They certainly don't waste food, eating the bones, hair, organs and muscle of the carcass. Let's admire, enjoy and preserve these unique Australian marsupials.
The koala is the evolutionary offspring of an ancient tree-dwelling marsupial that also gave rise to the wombat. While the wombat took to the ground, the koala has spent the last 15 million years developing a relationship with Australia's gum trees. Koalas worked out a resistance to the poison of the leaves and have a unique way to digest them. It is their unique source of food, they depend 100% on it. They spend most of the time on the treetops and rest most of the day to process the poisonous load. Koalas are one of the main reasons tourists visit Australia. They die for a selfie cuddling a koala in a zoo. These marsupials have turned into international ambassadors of peace and are frequently given to allied countries as a show of goodwill. Wombats are short-legged, muscular quadrupedal marsupials. They are the koala's closest living relative and are among the largest burrowing mammals in the world. Wombats are about 1 meter in length with small stubby tails and weigh between 20 and 35 kilograms. There are three species, the bare-nosed wombat and two hairy-nosed, northern and southern, being the bear knows the most abundant and named common wombat. The common wombat can be found in forests, outback and alpine environments, heathlands and coastal shrublands. All wombat species live in burrows, often creating complex networks with tunnels and chambers that can extend up to 150 meters in radius. They excavate these burrows in well-drained soils, often near creeks and gullies. Wombats are nocturnal herbivores with fairly poor eyesight. They rely on smell to navigate and find food. In protected areas like Kangaroo Valley, New South Wales, or in Tasmania, they can be seen grazing long after dawn and before sunset. are the quintessence of Australia, the most vivid example of the evolutionary adaptation of a species to the climatic changes that have occurred on the continent since its separation from Gondwana on its migration towards the tropics. In the process, they developed the most efficient transportation system for a mammal, the one that consumes the least energy, the one that allows them to travel long distances to obtain food in a deserted environment. They can hop up to 60 km per hour for short distances, but maintain stability for 20 to 25. Each jump in the larger species can be 8 meters long and up to 2 meters high. A kangaroo is a marsupial mammal, a macropod, which means big foot. A male kangaroo is called a boomer, a female a flyer, a baby kangaroo is called a joey. Groups of kangaroos are called mobs. They can be just a few up to a hundred individuals. There is a dominant male who do most of the mating, several juveniles, many females, and the joys. Kangaroos have good eyesight, but only respond to moving objects. 
They have excellent hearing and can swivel their large ears in all directions to pick up sounds. A population of about 50 million kangaroos is estimated to be in the country, two per inhabitant. There are 47 varieties of kangaroo, ranging in size from the smallest of 1 kilogram to the 6 foot, 300 pound red kangaroo. The reds are found over most of arid Australia, preferring flat, open plains. Eastern greys are found from Cape York to Tasmania on the east coast. Western greys have an equally wide distribution, from Western Australia to Victoria. Both species prefer denser vegetation. Kangaroos usually have one young annually. The joey remains in the pouch for nine months and continues to suckle until 12 to 17 months of age. Kangaroos can have three babies at one time. All these features make a collection of extraordinary adaptations to survive and thrive in the mostly deserted continent. On the Australian coat of arms, the emu and the kangaroo were immortalised as symbols of Australia to represent the country progress and uniqueness. The common brush-tailed possum is the most familiar and abundant of the Australian possums. It is a large possum with a bushy tail and pointy ears. Adults can weigh around 1.5 to 4 kilograms. The combined head and body length is around 50 centimeters and tail about half of that. Common brush-tail possums are found in many types of habitats, but hay have adapted well to living with humans and are commonly encountered in urban areas, houses and gardens, where they feed on scraps and fruits. Some fruit shops offer overripe and stock for the night visitor. People complain about attacking chickens, but is it to be remembered that we are the invaders, and they just found a place eliminating man's waste, like many other wildlife species. Kangaroos started to evolve from possum-like ancestors that lived in the trees about 50 million years ago. Tree kangaroos seem to have evolved from rock wallabies more than kangaroos. The Lumholtz tree kangaroo is one of the two species in Australia 
It inhabits the forests of the wet tropics in far north Queensland. The Lumholtz tree kangaroo is primarily a leaf eater, but also consumes fruits and flowers from quite a wide variety of native rainforest trees and vines. It has very sharp, strong claws, powerful forelimbs, and a mixed locomotion. On the ground the primary locomotion is a bipedal hop or walk. The Lumholtz tree kangaroo, another amazing Australian marsupial. Among the hot and dry grasslands of western Queensland, the greater bilby lives far from the public interest surrounding its conservation. Greater bilbies can live in a range of habitats. They are omnivores, meaning they feed on a range of foods. When looking for food, the greater bilby digs small holes up to 25 centimeters deep. As one of Queensland's 15 endangered mammals, the greater bilby is the subject of intense conservation efforts, requiring the provision of adequate habitat without feral cats and foxes. The dingo is Australia's wild dog. It is an ancient breed of domestic dog that was introduced to Australia, probably by Asian seafarers, about 4,000 years ago. Dingoes can live in a wide range of habitats. Their preference is woodland and grassland areas that extend to the edge of forests. Dingoes are opportunistic carnivores. Mammals form the main part of their diet especially kangaroos, wallabies, and wombats. In addition to that they can catch birds, reptiles, and a variety of other prey. Its great adaptability is their biggest success. Australian sea lions are a type of seal that are native only to Australia. The stunning views of the Australian sea lion colony and the neighbouring coastline are what make Seal Bay in Kangaroo Island an essential experience for visitors. It is possible to walk among the third largest colony of Australia sea lions, here in spring basking on the sun and feeding the pups, totally relaxed, not being harassed by males, as it is not the mating season. The Australian sea lion is one of five sea lion species in the world their population was seriously decreased by sealing between the 18th and 20th centuries, being extinct on many areas. The total Australia population is only near 15,000s, spread from Kangaroo Island to Western Australia, making it one of the rarest sea lion species in the world.
flying foxes are bats, or, more accurately, megabats, big bats, with a wingspan of about one meter. They are commonly known as fruit bats, but their diet is predominantly nectar, pollen, and fruit, in that order. They feed mostly at night, and the screech sounds they make annoy many people for living nearby. When they arrive to some area with trees, their droppings can be a problem for the amount and smell. It can also carry many dangerous bugs. Never enter in contact with these bats in any form, as they can transmit several diseases, Lyme disease is one. They don't use sonar like smaller insect-eating bats, only their eyes and ears, like us, they see as well as a cat at night, and are just about as smart. There is a big controversy about bats in cities, but they follow the food, and if it is gone by human intervention from their ancestral feeding grounds, they go to parks and forests in the cities. These unique animals help regenerate our forests and keep ecosystems healthy through pollination and seed dispersal. The red-necked wallaby is a medium-sized macropod marsupial common in the more temperate and fertile parts of Eastern Australia, including Tasmania. It is the most abundant species of wallaby. They live in the scrub, woodlands and eucalypt forests and will seek shelter in the vegetated gullies. Because of land clearing, their grazing areas have increased. Its name is due to the reddish fur on its shoulders and nape. They also are distinguished by their black nose and paws, white stripe on the upper lip, and grizzled medium grey coat with a reddish wash across the shoulders. The ears of these wallabies are longer than those of others of the kangaroo family. Red-necked wallabies' diets consist of grasses, roots, tree leaves, and weeds. They are mainly solitary, but will gather together when there is an abundance of resources such as food, water, or shelter. Red-necked wallabies are generally nocturnal, spending most of the daytime resting, but in protected areas, they can be seen feeding night and day. When they do gather in groups, they have a social hierarchy similar to other wallaby species. Red-necked wallabies breed all year round, except for the Tasmanian subspecies, Bennett's wallaby, that does in the late summer. A female red-necked bears one offspring at a time. The young stay in the pouch for about 280 days, where after females and their offspring stay together for only a month. However, females may stay in the home range of their mothers for life, while males leave at the age of two. Where they feel protected from predators and man, they gather in huge numbers, no matter if it is a private property or wild environment, like in Bunya Mountains, where they seem to live in paradise.